Thank you, Alphonse. Um, and welcome to everybody to this webinar today. Um, this is, of course, a one of our uh, uh, our third webinar that we are presenting um, uh, regionally and, of course, internationally. So um, happy to go in a little bit more depth today regarding uh, applications in the gut-brain access research area and specifically uh, studies that were conducted with Metabolon's uh, global discovery and targeted uh, panels. And so with, without further ado, I'll get us going. And so just to start us off, um, I have a brief agenda. So I'll start today with uh, an introduction to metabolomics, just to level set um, our knowledge and what we are going to discuss today. Um, and, and then after that, I'll go into the first case study. Uh, this is, of course, a keto diet and gut microbiome case study. Uh, after that, I'll give a high-level overview of our platform technologies, uh, key deliverables, and I'll finish off with a, a final case study where we're looking at targeting specific micro uh, microbial metabolites uh, and more specific case study on that. So just at a high level before we start, um, the, the objective for me today is to bring home the message that, um, that metabolomics is quite useful in delineating what is happening throughout a, a, a biological system. And in this, uh, I'll show some examples in, uh, of studies that clearly define a link between the gut and the brain. Um, and then also giving clear examples of this forgotten organ as we are defining it currently and how it impacts host and how important it is to profile the role and the impact of, of this forgotten organ more accurately. Also, I'll show some great examples of uh, how our different products can be used uh, and how and services can be used and how um, researchers have used these uh, in, to inform their bio, biology. After each uh, section, as described here, we will uh, stop briefly uh, for a few minutes to answer questions that might have come up uh, up until that time. Um, so please feel free to pop those in our Q&A um, section, and we will address them throughout the webinar. Okay, so let's start off. What is metabolomics? So as, uh, as many of us um, will be aware that during, a, during the year, we will go for our um, checkups, our physical checkups, and there we would be asked to provide um, some blood work uh, where we will look, where the physicians look at our glucose levels, our amino acid levels, potentially our fatty acid le uh, levels, and of course, our lipid levels. This, of course, gives them an idea of um, our health status at that time, but as can be imagined that this is a very focused approach. Um, it looks at, uh, only at a set of metabolites, usually quite reduced, uh, and compares it against a healthy range um, and, and in itself being very targeted. But what about all of the other metabolites and all the other small molecules and pathways that are being implicated in this biology? So at, at Metabolon uh, and in metabolomics in general, uh, the focus is very much a holistic approach, looking at all the different pathways and how they are interlinked with each other and the metabolisms uh, involved to eventually to create a specific phenotype. Um, and on top of that, metabolomics is, is quite unique in the, uh, in the sense that it captures the dynamic nature of a phenotype. And so that includes um, different biochemical reactions like degradation, modification, um, transport of uh, metabolites uh, across different organs, different uh, cell types, as well as the classical biochemical reactions that are occurring on a, on a frequent basis. All of this is very well captured by metabolomics and, and allows us really to, to connect all of the other biological analyses, clinical analyses, as well as other omics. So with that said, um, once again, at, uh, at the systematic level, what are we looking at here? And where does metabolome play a role? Metabolomics play a, ro a role. So in, in essence, it is the, the final omics, the final um, measurement in the central dogma. Um, 
covering the endogenous component. Um, and so really capturing what has happened in the genomics, transcriptomics and prote proteomics spaces by really measuring the final product of all of those reactions. Um, and, and that would be capturing the metabolome. What it also does very well is capture the ex exogenous component that that impacts a biological system or a host or an individual. And that includes lifestyle choices that we make, the microbiome, this forgotten organ that we'll discuss, uh, discuss in detail today. Um, but all of those aspects, how that impacts uh, a biological system is also captured very well um, by metabolomics. And this, of course, then at, at the end of the day, this data is then used to inform different aspects um, in, in a clinical setting, but uh, focusing on health and wellness um, options, nutritional components, diagnostics, and therapeutics. And of these, we will discuss a few today. Looking more specifically in, uh, across the clinical pipeline, metabolomics plays a role quite, quite broadly across all of these um, and and as can be imagine, imagined that in the basic research and discovery stages at the beginning of the clinical pipeline, there we would usually want to have our lenses open as far as possible to be able to look at as many as possible changes and as many as possible biological um, features to be able to get a good sense of what is happening in our model. That is, at that stage, quite new still to us. But as we move along this clinical pipeline, this is really where uh, the, the question becomes very targeted, the hypotheses become very targeted, and um, the, the end result of our analysis should be very focused. And this is also where metabolomics can also uh, go from a very global approach on the left-hand side of this diagram to becoming a very targeted approach uh, as, we, as we continue uh, across the continuum here. And metabolomics, both in a global as well as in a targeted sense, have been used across this whole pipeline to understand uh, mechanism of action, target engagement, PKPD studies, as well as as we continue to the right hand side, really helping in patient stratification, uh, understanding efficacy, being used as efficacy biomarkers, diagnostic biomarkers, um, et cetera. So quite quite interesting to to see that metabolomics and its um in, in its different formats can be used across this pipeline um to inform uh, research uh, researchers on on different stages of their research and so i i hope those few slides gave some uh, a, a nice introduction to metabolomics and what we can expect from metabolomics and that really takes me then um to to start talking about our first case study here and so, as I mentioned, this is a case study that involves uh, the metabolic profiling of the impact of the keto diet and or the gut microbiome on, on specifically refractory epilepsy. So for uh, refractory epilepsy, it is well known that a low carbohydrate, high fat keto diet is an effective treatment um, for refractory epilepsy. So we also know that the gut microbiome is the key intermediate between diet and the host physiology. And this takes me back to the previous slide that I showed you where the microbiome's impact on, on a biological system, in this case, um, a human, uh, it is very much cap captured in a metabolomics analysis. Species composition and the function of the gut microbiome is also critically shaped by diet. And that is from a lot of uh, research that we have seen come out in the, uh, in the last few years, um, that that is quite critical. So the, the mechanism underlying um, this neuroprotective effect, on the other hand, is, is quite, uh, still remains unclear. And up until the study was done, um, was... It, it was still elusive to understanding exactly the mechanism behind it. So uh, the other aspect, the other challenge to the ketogenic diet and uh, being used as an intervention here is that the keto diet use remains low due to difficulties of implementing it, dietary compliance issues, as well as uh, some adverse side effects that uh, individuals do experience on this diet. 
So there's several aspects to consider and, and getting a better understanding of how this mechanism works could uh, uh, allow us to understand um, the mechanism better and potentially find therapeutics that, that could replace this ketogenic diet. So more specifically to this, this given study, uh, this of course uh, was a ketogenic diet um, and knowing that it is required for the protection ac against acute electrical induced seizures and spontaneous tonic colonic uh, seizures. Um, was was the main driving force behind this research and understanding better if the diet or a microbiome or a combination of these is re required for this protection. So what uh, the research has discovered here and is represented by this figure is that the ketogenic diet alters the gut microbiome composition um, event from from what you can see in this figure. And what we're seeing here that specifically on a ketogenic diet there are two main species that are significantly increasing in, in, in their presence in the ketogenic diet patients. And these are the Echomantia, uh, Echomantia um, clade, as well as a, a Parabacteroides. And these, uh, as, as can be seen, their levels increase significantly on the ketogenic diet. When we look at these specific bacteria over uh, the 14 day treatment, we see that the levels change differently, um, but significantly over these 14 days and uh, as they uh, start populating um, the gut. So what was interesting to see that, <clears throat> that uh, um, the mice treated with the antibiotic and, and rare germ-free or specific pathogen-free um, mice, that they were resistant to ketogenic diet mediated seizure protection. But how? And, and what is this mechanism, mechanism of action, which is unknown or was unknown until this paper came out? And so, in this case, they wanted to employ metabolomics to pass out the mechanism. But what, what is quite nice in this uh, diagram here to understand is that. On a normal Cho diet, we, we don't see this elevated seizure, uh, seizure protection that is being seen. Um, but with a specific pa pathogen-free um, mouse, mouse model here, uh, on a ketogenic diet, we immediately see a seizure protection elevation here. But uh, several other conditions where, that we are looking here at are where antibiotics was given to these mouse to, of course, remove the, the microbiome component of it. Um, on a ketogenic diet, does not get that um, uh, that seizure protection. And what was also very interesting is if we use these two different microbes uh, individually, the seizure protection is also not um, translated well. But in combination and on a ketogenic diet, this is where we see the, the, the most profound seizure protection observed. They also had a negative control where they looked at a different um, bacterial species on the ketogenic diet um, that then it, it also did not provide this seizure protection. So really focusing on these two uh, individual um, components or groups of mice was, was the focus going forward in this study and really looking at the metabolomics in, uh, of these uh, groups of mice. So... Uh, the group then was in contact with Metabolon. Um, we, we were contracted to do the global metabolomics or global discovery panel on both the CEQL and the serum uh, samples. So within the CEQL samples, we detected more than 600, uh, in both CEQL and serum samples, we uh, detected more than 600 metabolites um, and, and really provided quite a rich uh, data set to work with. And so, one of the first analyses that were done was the principal component analysis. And what, what is quite clearly shown here is the separation away from a, a normal CHO diet or control diet here to different situations, either with antibiotic treatment and a keto diet or um, uh, these mice without any additional probiotics from uh, the species just on a keto diet, clearly different from the, the co uh, control diet and the sequel uh, so, uh, sample. The same separation that is being ob observed in the sequel side is also observed systematically in the serum side as well. So whatever is happening in the gut is clearly shown to translate um, quite well to, to the systemic um, side of, 
uh, of the mice. Um, and with this data, um, the both PCA and RFA analysis, the random forest analysis, which, which I'll show in the in the next uh, figure, were able to successfully discriminate between seizure protection, uh, the seizure, seizure protection groups, as well as the seizure susceptible groups. And the, the colonic luminal metabolites when, um, were the more predicted ones with 94% uh, success rate and the serum metabolite at 87.5. Quite, uh, quite nice levels uh, and quite predictive models for them. And so this is uh, the random forest analysis that was, was done as well. And what I wanted to show here is quite, quite nicely that there were several different types of um, metabolites quite cru uh, crucial in developing this predictive model. But what we do uh, see it, both in the colonic luminal content as well as in the serum content is that the gamma glutamyl uh, amino acids started to show the uh, uh, the true colors, and and were quite interestingly uh, upregulated um, in in the non seizure protected protected group. So um, so these widespread decrease in the subset of ketogenic and gamma glutamyl amino acid were the driving force behind seizure um, susceptible versus non susceptible uh, separation. And so when we look at the specific specific gamma glutamyl amino acids, we can find very nice patterns um, that are emerging between the ketogenic diet on these mice, only with the ketogenic diet, as well as a ketogenic diet with the supplementation of these two um, uh, genuses of, of bacteria. And then of course, no seizure protect or no reduction really in these levels uh, in, in those models that we were treated with antibiotics. And both of these, um, these patterns are, are clear, um, both in the sequel content up here, um, as well as in the serum sample, uh, serum, serum samples, where we see a very nice trend downwards uh, in both um, diet only and diet with probiotics. So a, in a subsequent metabolomics analysis a study that was done on the hippocampal metabolite profiles uh, showed that the profiles um, distinguishing samples from seizure protection versus uh, seizure susceptible mice was once again quite clear in the metabolomics data. And so what we see here in this, um, in this uh, block that I generated here is very much the the seizure protected groups having elevated levels of uh, amino acids and um, and being quite different from, from those of, of the susceptible group. So the brain relies quite, ac uh, uh, relies quite heavily on active import of essential amino acids to fuel neurotransmitter biosynthesis and as such is sensitive to the fluctuation um, in, in peripheral amino acids uh, and their bioavailability. So peripheral amino acids serve as a substrate, as many of you would know, for the synthesis of GABA and glutamate through anaplerotic refilling of, a, of the Krebs cycle intermediates, or indirectly through the carbon dioxide fi fixations stimulated by uh, hyperammonemia. So gamma glutamyl amino acids in particular are hypothesized to exhibit increased transport properties compared to non-gamma glutamylated forms. So having those elevated in, in the serum system would clearly show, um, show a concern as they would be transported easier to the, um, uh, to the brain. Both GABA and glutamate levels uh, uh, in, uh, showed uh, an increase in the diet and the microbiome mediated seizure protection groups. And this is uh, evident in these uh, two figures here, where we can see that uh, these, the GABA glutamyl ratio is quite significantly increased uh, in both the keto diet only or the um, microbiome mediated ones as well. And uh, the gl glutamine levels as well uh, follow the same trend there. So um, to understand the mechanism a, a little bit more, um, 
that want to understand where, what what does the ketogenic diet do or what do the microbiota, uh, what does the microbiota do to reduce these seizures? To, to determine whether gamma glutamylation uh, impacts seizures susceptibility, they gavaged uh, these uh, specific pathogen-free mice on a chow diet uh, for three days with GGS top which is a selective in uh, irreversible inhibitor of the gamma glutamyl transpeptidase enzyme. So really reducing the level of gamma glutamylation here. And so what we see in this graph is that after giving GG uh, is top uh, to these mice, that the, it inferred a seizure, pr seizure protection um, by, by limiting gamma glutamylation of, um, of these, um, these amino acids. So also looking after uh, GGT activity um, and comparing that to uh, the, the original analyses, we see that uh, mice on a child diet have the highest level of GGT activity and thus no protection against the seizures. Where we have the keto diet only as well as the supplementation of uh, the, the bacteria or the probiotics, we see a similar um, reduction in GGT activity, and thus uh, an increased level of seizure protection. But what was very informative was that in, in using both the ketogenic diet, as well as uh, supplementing with uh, these bacteria, it inferred the highest level of inhibition of this activity, and really supporting this the, the whole mechanism at the end of the day. So what did this study reveal to us? Firstly, that the ketogenic diet alters the gut microbiota. So that was very nice to see a direct relation there. And that promoting selected microbial interaction uh, was, uh, was very um, important for the reduction in bacterial gamma glutamylation activity. And so with this, uh, met metabolomics data was quite crucial in identifying and showing decreased peripheral um, GG uh, glutamyl uh, amino acids and elevated the bulk hippocampal GABA um, and glutamyl ratio, which is very important for the protection uh, against these uh, seizures. Altogether, um, it, it showed that the, the diet as well as the bacteria in combination really provide, provided the biggest um, seizure protection and, of course, revealed a lot about this mechanism of action behind all of this. So hopefully I, uh, I was able to translate the, uh, this, um, the, the usefulness of metabolomics in this case study and how this hopefully can, can be uh, applied to, to other studies as well. And so that brings us now to the first round of questions. So I'll, I'll put this over back to Alphonse to see if we have uh, gotten any questions at this point. Yeah, so Hino, as of yet, we don't have any questions. Um, I can remind everybody on the right side, you'll see a Q&A bubbles. If you click there, you can type in questions throughout the presentation and we will address them at certain points during the webinar. So feel free mm -hmm. to reach out um, there with any questions, um, mm -hmm. but that's that note. And then I do wanna put a poll up on screen. So um, a few people have already answered, but you'll see it here. The question is, have you outsourced metabolomics as a service before? So give everybody a few seconds who hasn't had the opportunity to vote to come up there. Okay, I still see some more votes coming in. There's a few more ticking in. Give it another 10 seconds or so and close it up. Okay. And the poll is closed. So make sure that's done. Yes. Yeah, so to that question, have you outsourced metabolomics as a service before? We got about 24% said yes, 
and uh, about 76% said no. And we want to ask this because at the end of the day, that is what Metabolon does, right? Uh, as Hino had mentioned earlier, and as you can see from our first case study, we're a partner for this Metabolomics as a service um, and a CRO to do so. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to Hino to talk a little bit about Metabolon, a little bit about our platform. And from there, if any questions come up, please post them in the Q&A. Hino, back mm -hmm. to you. Thank you, Alphonse. So yes, um, the next section is is talking again a, a, a little bit about metabolomics, but now specifically regarding our services and our products and how those can be used. And of course, also what can anyone uh, doing a service with us, of course, expect as key deliverables. And after that, I'll, I'll we'll open that up for another few questions, but then we'll finish up with our uh, last case study as well. Okay, so at Metabolon, we have mainly these two categorizations uh, of, of services that we provide. The first is a Metabolon, falls in the Metabolon Discover category. Uh, those are our discovery panels and of which we have our flagship um, product there, our global discovery panel. that really provides you um, relative quantification of uh, a large number of metabolites and really giving you that broad open lens uh, view of, of what is happening within the biological samples. Um, and then on, on the right hand side, it's the Metabolon targeted uh, portfolio that, that we have. And that's made of, of different types of targeted panels, as well as single analyte assays. And so that, um, as I mentioned in the clinical pipeline, that becomes, um, this, this is where that becomes very targeted. Uh, and we have certain classes of metabolites that we, uh, we, we focus on and we do absolute quantification on, or we look at a set of biologically relevant uh, sets of metabolites that we have, have combined to really give you an insight into the specific biology in a quantitative manner. And so as I go through these products, you will see that there are QR codes on the side that are popping up. You can scan those, of course, um, to, find, uh, to get a little bit more information regarding those products. And then, of course, we also have uh, these products available for download um, in this session as well. Okay, so I'll start off with um, our, our global discovery panel that we have. And um, this is, like I said, is our flagship uh, product that we have. And why I'm saying that is that it's, it is a front to back offering that we provide from a study planning component all the way to interpreting the data and providing uh, the, the feedback. So uh, it really provides a, a personalized guidance uh, uh, at every step of the way. So from study design to sample collection, report visualization to biological interpretation. We have a Metabolon expert that really can guide you through every step of it. Uh, and of course, at the study design step, we, we chart the best course for the project. We, we talk about power of the study. We talk about samples uh, and and uh, the amount of sample, how they should be collected, and making sure that th that allows us for a good metabolomic study. Sample prep uh, is done on our end. Uh, Pre-processed -pro samples are sent to us. Um, and this is then where, of course, any study it, it starts off and where we start building a strong foundation for a successful project at the end of the day. Um, after that, of course, that is the way the analysis is taking place. And, and here we are, of course, focused on precision and reproducibility across a lot of different types of me metabolites and chemi uh, chemical compounds and classes that we want to measure the, uh, the metabolites. After that, that goes into our patent and curation platform. This is where we really want to um, follow uh, several steps to eliminating noise, doing data reduction, and really matching against our uh, world-leading library, where we match against um, a set of um, metabolite standards, um, authentic standards that were run under the same conditions as uh, as the samples are being done. And then finally, we move to the the bioinformatics and the interpretation, and this is really where we harness our, our, the power of our historical uh, insights and, and take the results beyond the data table. And we have a, a, a group of um, PhD scientists, uh, study directors that will use that data, the statistics done on it, and really interpret the data uh, for you from a metabolomics point of view and provide you that, that insight. And this really allows our clients to focus on their speciality 
um, and and being able to easily incorporate our interpretation from the metabolomic side to make it a very successful study at the end of the day. So a little bit more about uh, two approaches that we follow. The first is um, we have a chemocentric approach to our annotation. And what does that mean is that we, we really focus on the, um, the scientific integrity and the, uh, that you can assign to these annotations that we make. So when you want to make clinical insights and decisions on, on your data sets, um, these have to be the utmost confidence uh, that you have in your metabolites. And that's why we provide, from our, our side, we provide for, for the majority of metabolites that we identify a tier one identification. And this really means that we measure three different characteristics of those, um, those metabolites and match it against a authentic standard on our platform um, that has run under the same conditions. And that happens for, for, as an example, in plasma or urine, we run between, uh, we identify between 1200 to 1500 metabolites and between 80 to 85% of these would be at the tier one. Um, and for the rest of them would be at the tier two. And this is mainly, um, we have the same uh, three measurements that we measure for the tier one, but the only difference is that these uh, stand, for, for these metabolites, we don't have authentic standards, mainly because they're not yet available and have to be syn synthesized. And that's also part that we uh, uh, are actively involved in, in, in developing our pipeline every year. The second approach is very much what is represented on the right-hand side of the slide. And this is our biological path orientation uh, that we, each metabolite that we identify is immediately categorized in a super pathway and a sub pathway. And so this gives you the chemical ontology that that given metabolite um, is related to, but then also the biological context of that specific metabolite. And so really providing you both confidence, but also biologically relevant information um, for your study and, and for the interpretation of your data. And, and finally, for our global, um, a global discovery panel, what can you expect to get from us? So it's a quite a nice package to, to receive. Uh, firstly, in the middle here, it's a final report from our study directors. And there they will capture the biolog biological differences. They will discuss that in detail. Um, and we, we refer to these reports usually as publication or board ready. Um, so that will have it very well captured what what happened with what the data represented in this study. You will also receive data files, and these are areas that are under the curve data files um, that for each metabolite across across all the samples. And um, we we provide you intensity data for each of those metabolites. We normalize the data, we normalize and impute the data, and we also log transform that as a standard deliverable. We also provide a heat map or human readable file that really assigns both biological um, classification, but also statistical significance to, to interpret the data easier. And then we also provide uh, on, uh, online pathway analysis tools um, where uh, the data is then superimposed on biological pathway maps. So really giving you that uh, additional view of the biological relevance of, of the changes observed in the data. And then we also have some tools, pathway enrichment tools uh, that can be applied as well. So that really encompasses our, our global discovery panel. And as I continue now, I'll move uh, more into the targeted panels that we also have. And to start off, um, this is our complex lipid targeted panel. And so this is a, a panel that looks at 1,100 different lipids, but it addresses several challenges that we have in, in, in lipid uh, lipidomics uh, analyses. And so lipids are very complex and, uh, and have a very high comp combinatorial complexity. Um, due to the different chain, uh, chains that they have and the different compositions of the chains, uh, but also the different um, different types of head groups that you have. And then of course, the different levels of saturation that are also uh, possible in these. And then usually because of the similar nature, there's a lot of overlap that we see in, uh, in lipid analyses. And so that com complicates a, uh, the analysis and makes it very difficult to have a comprehensive method um, for, for, many, uh, for many lipids. So, what is Metabolon solution? 
So we have um, developed a, a platform that uses ion mobility separation to separate uh, lipid ions based on classes and allowing only one class of lipids into the mass spec at a time. And after that, we do the uh, speciations. We also uh, made it quanti uh, quantitative by including 50 internal standards uh, with each analysis. And this allows us then to quantify lipids across the full spectrum and chemical diversity. So not only across classes, but also within classes, we have different internal standards to allow us to uh, effectively quantify across them as well. And this then allows us to have this comprehensive coverage of 1100 lipid species across 14 lipid classes uh, that we can measure. And this, uh, this is the list of the different classes that we measure with, of course, the number of species in each class. What makes uh, this targeted as a lipid as a, a, a panel very, very nice also is that we have uh, some software to support it in, uh, as well. So we have pathway maps um, that really allow you to view results mapped by fatty acid, um, composition, complex lipid, and single lipid pathways. And it, it provides a discovery tool uh, and also a lot of reference information is contained within this tool. So quite an effective uh, tool to use when, when interested in lipid, lipids and if, if quantification of these lipids is important. As for our other targeted um, panels that we have, these become more focused and uh, are smaller in numbers. Um, but they usually fall within uh, our core bio biomarker development program, where we tend to usually start with a, dis discover a global discovery panel. And there we identify a subset of, of um, biomarkers or um, molecules of interest, as we have seen in the first case study. And we'll see how this whole pipeline was very much incorporated in the final case study. Um, but at the end of the day, we would then identify from a global discovery um, panel, we would identify a set of biomarkers. We would then validate those analytically and biologically um, on our um, in, in on a targeted panel. Um, and then we can take that all the way to validating that in a clinical trial setting as well. And this, of course, um, all moves towards being able to develop diagnostics. That's why a metabolon can really um, support our clients as well. So the next few um, are, slides will cover our new targeted panels and I will go through them quite quickly. Um, but this is just to give you an idea of, uh, of the new pathway of development, new targeted panels that are more biologically uh, um, validated um, and more diverse biologically relevant. And I'll start off with uh, the cannabinoids panel that we have. And this, of course, covers um, 31 analytes uh, from both endocannabinoids as well as phytocannabinoids and um, provides absolute quantification for these 31 analytes. And this is done on a, uh, as, as you will see for most of these uh, new panels, done on an eight-point calibration curve and has a general turnaround time from six to eight weeks. Uh, another new panel is our diabetes research marker targeted panel. This does an absolute quantification of 22 metabolites. And as you would see, this is, covers different biological pathways um, uh, uh, across amino acids, lipids, and so forth. And so quite um, also eight point calibration uh, and also the six to eight week turnaround time. Another one is the lipid mediators of inflammation. Uh, this is a panel of 58 analytes. And really uh, addressing the inflammation question that uh, so many diseases, of course, are involved with. And then um, the oxysterol panel, that is a smaller panel covering 12 um, uh, uh, cholesterol-related metabolites, um, being indicative of, of um, uh, of uh, inflammation, or, of course, of cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, all uh, these are very imp uh, implicated in most of those diseases as well. And then finally, our swingolipid panel um, that covers uh, 61 lipid species from, from five different classes, uh, mainly the ceramides and swingomyelins here. Um, and these are then um, profiled as well. And then there's also the option of having a pathway tool to that 
to, to aid in visualization of the data. And finally, to just round out uh, the, the targeted panel discussion is um, just to highlight the validation steps that Metablon puts these through. Um, these, of course, are then uh, we have different options of validation, exploratory, non-GCP or REO, as well as GCP. And that, just to give you an, a, a very detailed insight into what do these different validation products go through, um, and both the non-GCP and GCP follow FDA guidelines quite closely, just with different acceptance criteria, and um, the GCP going for, through several other stability testing um, measures as required. And of course, the, both the global as well as our targeted uh, the panels all are governed by uh, our ISO accreditation, CLIA, and CAP certification as well. So uh, at utmost confidence in the process um, through both discovery as well as targeted. So finally, why Metablon? And I'll just go through some of the uh, and let the, uh, through some of the numbers and let the numbers do the uh, talking. Um, so the first number, 5,400, you saw that there several times through the discussion. So really the world's largest reference uh, library of biologically relevant metabolites with 5,400 metabolites. We have conducted four, 500 different diseases, study, uh, studies on different diseases. And then, of course, the final um, number, 10,000, this is just continuing to grow. Uh, but the number of projects that we have completed we have over 20 years of experience in metabolomics and uh, we'll be happy to, to, to see how we can help anyone else um, uh, discover new biological insights. And with that, I'll open that for, for questions at this time. Don't know, Alphonse, if there are any questions that have come in. Uh, yes, I know we have a few. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, the first one, I'm gonna show it up on the screen. So, do you know, I'm sorry, sorry increase in the gut? So Alphonse, I'm losing you. So Alphonse, can you, can you repeat that? Are you able to hear me, Hano? Yes, I can. Okay, did you hear the question? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I think there was an error. So the question here is, do you know the metabolism of bacteria increased in the gut due to KD and how this could alter the ratio of GABA to glutamate? The mechanism of how that, uh, it, um, the mainly the ketogenic diet, um, I think through the ketogenic diet, the microbiome was changed and these specific bacterial species uh, contributed to the um, reducing the activity of the um, uh, uh, the gamma glutamyl uh, transferase the peptidase um, enzyme and so by that reducing uh, effectively the gamma glutamyl uh, glutamylated amino acid concentration um, in the systemic um, environment and that then did not translate as well uh, to the did not go through the uh, blood brain barrier and that really reduced um, uh, in, it actually increased the gamma glut glutamyl ratio and that uh, in effect provided the the seizure protection excellent thanks Hino. Next up, we have another question here. So does the ketogenic diet also help in Parkinson's or Alzheimer's diseases? Good question. I think uh, there are a lot of research projects that are trying to to look into this. Um, there is a very strong relation between the microbiome and in both AD as well as PD uh, phenotypes. And so there's a lot of research going on there where, that we are also supporting from our end. Um, but the ketogenic diet, I have not seen that specifically being used in, in such a way. Um, but a very good point and something to to for anyone that's interested, of course, um, to do that, we will be happy to do the metabolomics on that end. Great, thanks, Hino. Next question up here. 
So uh, gamma glutamylation is a chemical transformation leading to higher transport of glutamate. Is this involved in the transport of glutamate in the brain, thus contributing to the GABA glutamate ratio? I mean, uh, that was not necessarily the um, the view that or the investigation in this study, um, but that's a good point to, to, to investigate as well. I think here mainly it was focusing on um, the, the gamma glutamyl amino acid composition or concentration within the systemic nature and how that potentially could have been translated, um, um, translated or not, um, transported to the brain or not. Um, what that type of investigation would be uh, required more in the brain tissue um, to further investigate that specific mechanism. But very good question. Great. Got three more here. So um, this is a good question here, which I can answer. Uh, do clients include your report generator folks in publications? And is the client free to use any and all of the information in the report within the results and discussion of a manuscript? No copyright or plagiarism issues. So the general answer to that is that the data and report that we provide is our customers. And there are cases where we will talk about you know, more uh, contractual relationships, things like that. But yes, in a general sense, our customers own the data and the report and they can use that as they'd like, share it, publish it. Um, but we can talk about that in greater detail. If um, you reach out to us, we'd be happy to discuss it. So another question here, give me one second. Okay, just two really quick questions. First off, no, actually one more. Um, do we accept brain tissue uh, for metabolic analysis? And yes, we do. Flash frozen tissues are acceptable for us. So um, from there, I'm going to move forward and other questions we can address um, if time permits. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so on, on to our last case study. Um, and um, so this is very much looking at the case study where um, this project involved targeting microbial metabolites and specifically in the case of treating uh, autism. So the autumn, autism spectrum disorder, ASD, is a group of heterogeneous neurodevelopment conditions. These are characterized by def deficits in social communication and interaction. Many affected uh, individuals experience GI dysfunction, as well as a range of comorbidities, including sleep disorders, uh, epilepsy, and anxiety. And so, of course, as many of you would know, that currently there are no approved drugs for treatment of uh, treatment for the core symptoms of ASD, and thus. Uh, raising the, the question or the interest of finding potential, being able to um, correctly diagnose, but then also uh, finding uh, treatments to for the core symptoms of ASD. And uh, although the etiology remains poorly understood, it is widely recognized that genetic and environmental factors and the interaction contribute to ASD phenotypes. And so this is really where metabolomics comes in and trying to um, profile very well what the chemical phenotype is that relates to this clinical um, ASD phenotype. And one such environmental factor is the gut microbiome and a key regulator of brain development and behavior. So that's why more and more research in the, uh, in the ASD space uh, focuses on the microbiome and how uh, interventions on the microbiome can hopefully um, have positive uh, impacts on the phenotype. It is becoming increasingly evident that, that certain types of gut microbial metabolites, referred to as neuroactive microbial metabolites, can cross the blood-brain barrier and directly influence neural networks that play a role in regulating emotional, social, and cognitive functions. So in 2013, a landmark study made the first connection between behavioral abnormalities linking ASD to decreased gut ba barrier integrity and the modification of the gut microbiota. This study um, 
in, a, in effect implicated the gut microbial metabolites known as 4-ethyl phenyl sulfate or 4-EPS, specifically in these behavioral traits. In a follow-up study, um, they validated these observations in ASD and uh, non-affected children uh, implicating 4-EPS and other gut microbial metabolites um, in, in association with, with ASD. These metabolite biomarkers um, were discovered using our global discovery platform. So that, that started this whole process in 2013. Um, and then in subsequent preclinical development studies, the, the, the same group showed that 4-EPS uh, enters the brain and mod modulates neuroactivity and functional cogn cognitivity with brain networks underlying specifically emotional regulation. They found that 4-EPS influence oligodendrocyte maturation specifically and their function. Remarkably, pharmacological treatments with Clementine fumarate, a drug that promotes oligodendrocyte differentiation, prevented 4-EPS induced anxiety-like behaviors. So they already, they looked into these uh, different aspects, um, taking it from a biomarker to a preclinical development stage. So in a, a more recent study, they then uh, tested this a AB2004 um, that has an affinity for small aromatic and pheno phenolic molecules, which is the typical structure of neuroactive microbial metabolites in mice and found that it, it lowered these amounts of circulating 4-EPS and other, um, other aromatic um, molecules. Uh, specifically, in this case, it was um, in the preclinical model was tested in mice treated with this drug, and they did not uh, experience any uh, exhibit any anxiety-like behaviors. And this, of course, provided the rationale um, for taking this therapeutic approach to the clinic. So, in the recent open-label single cohort multiple ascending dose clinical trial, using our custom assay developed by Metabolon they demonstrated this in, uh, in a clinical setting that the, uh, that the potential of AB2004 by improving ASD-associated uh, behaviors by modifying the host exposure to these um, microbial or neuroactive microbial metabolites uh, in specifically 30 individual uh, adolescents. So going a little bit into the details of the study, so in, in, the, in the last study, the group uh, partnered, of course, with Metabolon, and they developed this customized assay to detect um, and quantify specific these specific neuroactive metabolites in urine as well as in plasma um, for, for all the participants in the trial. And at the top, you can see the study design where they, a metabolite, metabolite analysis done at baseline, uh, end of treatment, and final visit. What they saw was that the drug reduced uh, the levels for microbial metabolites in both the plasma and the urine, as evident in, uh, in the figure on the left. So these are the, the different aromatic metabolites uh, that they were treating for. And as we can see in the red bar, that's the baseline measurement of these um, metabolites and uh, how they decrease uh, in all cases uh, by the end of treatment, right? So eight weeks, two months treatment. Um, at the final visit, this is, of course, with a follow-up after four weeks, we do see a rebound of these, um, these aromatic metabolites, really indicating um, that, uh, that the intervention, the AB2004, was very effective in reducing these levels. Uh, to, to verify target engagement, they also tested the, drug, uh, the drug's effect on a controlled metabolite that uh, was known not to bond to AB2004 and it absorbed no, um, with no changes in the level of this metabolite. And this then provided additional evidence of the efficacy and target engagement of this drug. And um, so what was quite nice to see is that participants in this trial exhibited a reduced anxiety and irritable uh, phenotype after two months on the drug. And what was also very clear to see is that the, uh, the individuals that were, had a higher baseline level of anxiety and irritability um, had the biggest impact of, uh, of using AB2004 with having significant uh, down regulations of both anxiety as well as irritability. 
Um, the drug also improved symptoms associated with a ASD, specifically um, the GI-related problems. And that uh, it showed that fewer of the participants experienced GI-related problems, which is usually a common feature in ASD. So um, to summarize this, this is a really beautiful study that shows the crucial role of metabolomics in drug discovery and the development process. Our global discovery platform was the initial one starting this whole process and was the one uncovering the, the disease mechanism in the biomarker discovery and facilitated the selection of an effective drug target. Using uh, custom targeted panels qua uh, uh, qualifying the metabolites of interest, the research uh, team could better understand the drug's mechanism of action and ev eventually evaluate um, the efficacy and target engagement. If the treatment under, uh, under this specific study here proves effective, safe, and well-tolerated, in, this random, in a randomized double-blinded placebo-controlled trial, it could offer a exciting new therapeutic approach to ASD to the ASD community. And with that, I'll finish up with um, mentioning that uh, metabolomics is not new, and I hope uh, I was able to demonstrate that throughout these uh, case studies. Um, the one uh, aspect, of course, is quite clear: it has evolved quite con considerably over the last 20, 23 years. Metabolomics plays a very important role in characterizing the dynamic phenotype. Um, and so, uh, and also across the clinical pipeline, um, it hopefully it was clear that using different types of metabolomics is quite crucial uh, to inform the, the clinical and drug development um, pipeline and processes. And then finally, metabolomics is ideal for functionalizing other omics data. Um, so, of course, metabolomics on its own is very informative, but it is really the functionalizing aspect of other omics data and really can hone in on those biological insights. And with that, um, it's just an indication of some of the recent publications we have in the space and the gut-brain access space. Um, these are, of course, always available um, for, for us to share with you. Please re reach out to us and we can definitely have a uh, uh, further discussions regarding this. And uh, with that, I'll open it for the final questions. Thanks for that, Heino. Just one more question here. Um, and this is, uh, is there a link to the list of all the metabolites that are available in each panel? So that's going to be the targeted panels. And what I'll do right here is put the list or the link to our target brochure over at the bottom. So mm -hmm. anybody who'd like to see that, you can view this PDF. And if you go to our website under Metabolon Target, you'll be able to see each panel. And if you click on them, there'll be a, a spec sheet, a text sheet for each one. And it will yeah. um, outline all the metabolites that are included there. So Exactly. And, and the concentration to be detected. That, yes, our lower limits of quantitation. So yeah. If anyone has any other questions, let me know. You can reach out to us. Um, you'll see our information here. And you can use that QR code on screen to submit any inquiry. Um, but thank you again. I really appreciate uh, everybody attending. Thanks again, Hino, for your great presentation. Um, but I think that concludes. Thank you.